Hello, everyone. I'm talking to you from New York City at Tibet House. And uh, I'm glad to see you all. Even though I don't see you now, but you'll be seeing me speaking to you as you listen now. And I'm very honored to speak to all of you who are listening about the topic that I have thought of discussing. Uh, thought was uh, important to raise the issue and also be a little be educated about the uh, the uh, significance and importance and the relevance of the Tibetan culture uh, that is preserved by the Tibetans. Uh, in Tibet for the last about 13 to 1400 years. I thought it's important in part because Tibetan culture is primarily uh, based on the teachings of the Buddha. And the teachings of the Buddha is fundamentally based on the consideration of the sum totality of the universe. Everything that we know of or we can think of knowing. Everything that matters to us. Uh, anything that moves, crawls, flies, walks on this earth, including the earth in, in, in the physical universe itself. The, since such is the teachings of the Buddha, it is automatically becomes uh, naturally significant to anything that matters to us. Uh, which means that this has the teaching that can go back in time to the past. It also has the teaching that includes the uh, future uh, of the earth universe, including our own future life rebirths. It also includes the uh, concerns not just for humanity, or of course we are talking about humanity, but basically uh, uh, our human concern cannot be complete if it, if it is exclusive of itself. In other words, if it excludes other matters that are connected to us. Meaning that everything this, this culture, which is based on Buddha's teaching, is fundamentally based on the concept or the point of view called interdependent, a dependent origination in the, in the philosophical sense. Meaning that there's no one singular time or place or thing or idea or soul or consciousness, but there is some totality Totality, in the sense, it is beyond the singularity and plurality. It is the complete, in the sense that um, everything we, we as ordinary human being, that our senses can measure, recognize, interact, and feel or be conscious about has to be dependent on everything else. In other words, it depends on something else, and something else is connected to something else, which in turn connected to some other things. Uh, that kind of philosophy or the conception is 
the teachings of the Buddha is based on. Of course, we call it Tibetan culture. I don't think actually it's not a good, uh, in a bigger frame of reference, it's Tibetan culture, uh, we call it Tibetan culture because it comes, the way we present things come from the Tibet, the people of Tibet. Uh, people of Tibet who have uh, mastered their own destiny, build their own culture, design it, they were our own architect of their own culture. Uh, that is extremely conscious of the, um, the value of their own existence and around them. Went to India, look for the best of the knowledge that is available in India at that time. Picked and choose the teachings of the Buddha. It is a culture that Tibetan people did not inherit, nor it was imposed on the Tibetan people. It was literally uh, masterminded uh, uh, by themselves, uh, actually civilizing the Tibetan people themselves. A culture that took a shape that we know in the form of Tibetan culture that took about 500 years, from roughly about 7th century to about 12th, 12th century. Around that time, the, the full culture of Tibet took its own shape, identity. Uh, basically, transform the entire segment of humanity from a pre-Buddhistic, somewhat uh, nomadic, um, native culture that has its own views and ideas, but still kind of loose culture that doesn't necessarily have a, have um, culture that can be authenticated uh, 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 by the teachers such as Buddha himself. Uh, a culture may have been uh, evolved over time, refined itself, whatever the culture we may have before the Buddhism was introduced. But nothing like that Buddhism exists. And such culture uh, is, part because it becomes irrelevant, uh, is the, its relevance is um, already smelled and tasted by uh, modern day world culture. Uh, those of us around the world who are not, who are not those friends of Tibetan people who understood, who have tasted or listened to or studied the Tibetan culture, found the significance and the value. In their lives, so much so that the purest of the pure uh, Tibetan culture uh, kind of blends to the best of the other culture. After all, it's almost like drinking fresh water. Now they're mixing two glasses of water that come from two different sources, but when you put them together, it, it still is the water. So that kind of culture that um, that kind of culture that we have, um, we, have, we, we see the, um, uh, the value uh, that is recognizable and familiar. Uh, not just that, a culture that can uh, deepen, enhance 
uh, and heightened our um, our own uh, state of mind, our experience, our understanding, uh, our deeper and wider understanding of our own existence and the culture that teaches us the possibility of heightening or deepening uh, to the point what we call enlightenment, a culture that can transcend the, that has the resources to transcend the limitations that we experience. Um, uh, 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 that, that each one of us can actually develop the ability to transcend uh, our individual life and the humanity itself, um, transcend its, uh, its own limitations, such as our primary concern are like certain experiences like difficulties, sufferings is a common phenomena, struggle and search strive for happiness is very common to each and every one. So much so that a culture that can actually bring uh, a new light, a light that which otherwise cannot uh, 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 without which, the, otherwise, the, without that light, we cannot, uh, our, our life, the existence is going to feel and it looks, and it really will end up as if there's absolutely nothing more than what we see, hear, t- uh, smell, taste, touch, the essential part of the reality. In other words, the world uh, kind of exists basically essentially on the sensual reality. We call it sensual world. This, this particular physically embodied co- uh, being existence called desire realm. Desire realm. Word here, desire means sensual desire. That we need to eat, uh, feed our senses. Only then we survive. We need to feed our eyes with a good look. Uh, something interesting to look ears to hear a kind words or a nice music or a nice smell, nice taste for the food, touch, nice clothes that doesn't bother our skin or the touch that doesn't distract us. Um, a state of mind that feels good. Uh, that is pretty much some totality of the reality we live in. And we are pretty good at it, especially in the Western world. Uh, While we have pretty much, we have more than what we needed to feed our senses. And yet, we either, sometimes we are aware of it, sometimes we are not aware of it. Uh, Sometimes we are kind of suspicious uh, uh, in such a way that we think, is this all about it? But some people look beyond and beside that. And that is where Tibetan culture comes in. It complements where samsara shows the limitation, where it ends. The Tibetan culture should start that point. In other words, complement to the wor- worth this sensual world. Uh, uh, fails to uh, provide to us. Certainly, uh, Tibetan culture is an introverted culture. It looks inward. Now, you probably noticed that. We don't have a factories. So we don't have... In other words, we spend at least uh, over a thousand years uh, researching, studying, writing, exploring, meditating, 
and spending, some people spend entire life in the caves in search of whatever we are looking for. Some spend three years, some spend nine years. At least monastic life is based on that. The day one, a little boy becomes admitted to the monastery. He or a little nun uh, 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 is, 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 is all the entire uh, uh, culture is invested in, in the exploration uh, uh, of this inner world. So, um, so it, it becomes, it essentially becomes essential for the humanity because uh, we're born sensual beings. We might die sensually. Uh, most likely, we die happily. But those happiness, uh, essential based happiness, are mainly conditional, meaning that I have seen people who are happy, who don't mind dying, who had a very uh, happy, content life, and now they're 89 years old. They're ready to go. They look like a zip. They um, have been meditating or practicing some kind of spiritual path, and now they understood the life and now ready to go. Uh, they have no pessimism. They're content. And they know they cannot live any further, and now time has come, etc. That kind of wisdom is questionable uh, whether it's really a, uh, a person who have crossed beyond the sensual world, or he or she has just simply uh, have a common sense to. And lucky too, and uh, 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 it's lucky and blessed, and have a common sense to um, um, to see, uh, not to expect more than what the life can provide. And besides, they have been lucky enough uh, uh, in their entire life that they, whatever they wish to have, they somehow found it. 